I'm a pit bull, and I approve this message. Hello, welcome to Conversations with the Pitbull Live. I will be Jack Bellamy, and this is the annual Halloween Scary Show. And all you dog fighters, breeders, and animal abusers better be afraid. Because Jack is back. Oh my goodness! Jack Bellamy is in the studio. How did he sneak up in here on us, man? I didn't even see him come here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the annual Scary Show 2, Conversations with a Pitbull Live. I will be Foster Quarter. Hey, Danny Mason. How you guys doing? All right. And as uh, Conversations with a Pitbull, Danny brought donuts, just so you guys know why. Jelly donuts. As Conversations with a Pitbull live annual event we have our very special guest and a member of the conversations with a pitbull family antonio the wonderful greyhound miniature greyhound italian greyhound italian greyhound i knew that and his mom hi everybody hey how you guys been Good. Look at look at look at my man over there. Man. <laughs> so you know we we're up in here today and so glad. Look, he's eating. We are we. Are, mm, everybody's eating. So uh, first off, Fred Cray won't be with us today. He's traveling. He's in the air right now on the way here. Um, he won't make it for the show uh, to Los Angeles for um, Rebecca Corey's comedy uh, Pitbull. Stand Up For Pitt's comedy show tonight, and he's presenting her with the Wallace Award for her Million Pitbull March on Washington. So uh, congratulations to Rebecca for that, and um, Fred, see you in a few minutes. Uh, first off, uh, a couple of things. One, we want to say um, Elke in Germany. Uh, we send our love to you. Uh, a fan of the show and a true friend uh, and an animal lover and you know they got great organization going over there and he's had some health issues and he's out of the hospital and you know praise God man that's all I can say and you're gonna be good and okay and all our love goes to you and your family uh, second thing everybody uh, go to um, Paula Archer's or uh, the Breeder X support group and vote for Faith. And Paula will tell us more about that when she comes on. She better, okay? <laughs> so um, that's, those are the, the big issues right now. And um, some, there's some other things I'll get to uh, after a while. But you, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Yeah. Just uh, glad to be back in the lab. It's a... Uh Halloween, I'm sure everybody's getting ready to have their fun. You know, I know the dogs are going to be out in full effect with their outfits and mm. Mm. Uh, their, their outfits mm. and whatnot. Uh, my godchildren are all dressed up. I think the, the boys are uh, getting their Ninja Turtle on, and the uh, little girl's going to be uh, Ariel. You know, the princesses are 
Exactly. basically running stuff. Right, so, exactly, you know, exactly. Um, frozen and all that. They're, those guys are uh, looking forward to having some fun. So you guys have a good time. Um, one of the things I wanted to plug, our friends from Dogs Without Borders, they're uh, they're um, having this event with uh, No Kill LA Adoption Weekend, uh, November 8th through the 9th at the La Brea Tar Pit. So if you're in the Los Angeles area and you want to um, get exposed to some you know, not only some of the rescues, but also some of the adoptable dogs. Uh, NKLA is doing a wonderful event. They do it every year at the La Brea Tar Pits. That's November 8th through the 9th, uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you want information on that, visit dogswithoutborders.org or go to nkla.org. Uh, backslash events and you can see what's going on with that i mean it's free they got over a thousand dogs cats puppies kittens you know for adoption um and there'll be over 50 of uh in kla's partners including dogs without barters our, our family um and they, they wanted me to uh, talk a little bit about that so if you get a chance visit dogswithoutborders.org you'll get some more information on that and visit no kill la nkla.org backslash events and look for the NKLA Adoption Weekend. It's going on November 8th through the 9th. All right. Well, we'll be there. Um, I stroll through there every year and uh, take some pictures and do some other stuff. You know, um, I wanted to uh, tell everybody, if you didn't get a chance to see the um, interview with Alex Kirkland from... Uh, the Pet Care Center LA, uh, that's on the Foster's Animal World TV uh, YouTube channel, so you should go over there and check it out because it's happening. You know, um, l let's talk about what's scary, okay, for a second, because uh, scary, and uh, you know, you guys can chime in at any point, uh, but scary for me is I was looking, you know, at you know, back over the year. Scary is this people are still fighting dogs, you know. Uh, scary is people are still backyard breeding dogs. Uh, I was talking to Cinnamon yesterday, and... How's she doing? She's doing great. She's going to come in hopefully next Tuesday, and she's got some, uh, some special dogs we all need to see and uh, to let everybody know about this backyard breeding, man, it's the worst thing that can happen. They're inbreeding these dogs, and uh, it's just it's criminal, you know. So, uh, you know, it's it's criminal that you know the city is still letting this stuff go on. You know, it's criminal that the animal abusers are still doing you know all this insane stuff you guys know you look on facebook it's something every day somewhere around the world uh these people are doing these insane things you're scalding dogs and skinning dogs and hanging dogs and just and not just you know dogs this it's just all kinds of animals um the speaking of which i went to uh the farm walk um last week on sunday you know saturday that was educational and so much fun that uh, I can't even tell you. And so, What's the farm walk? The farm walk was the animal, say it's a group called the Animal Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it's about is, is mainly, I mean, I, I guess they're based in, in um, veganism, you know, and not eating meat. But it's about... Um, you know, trying to change the way that uh, farm animals are treated, you know, because those are some horrible, horrible, horrible conditions that uh, a lot of the food that we eat, you know, is, um, you know, the way the animals are treated, man. I mean, the, the pigs, you know, and people, you know, you, the odds of getting people to stop eating meat overall is, you know, slim to none. But how the animals are treated they can be treated with dignity and respect as you know creatures as oh, we're all god's creatures so um you know i mean the way that they have them lined up in the pens they can't even turn around and yeah. you know the, the 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 pigs are you know they they in a cage so small and then they have the, the piglets and they drop into a chute and just shoot down they don't even get to chance to see the the babies and any of that and mm. you know pigs are smart you know it's um 
uh, it's just, you know, it's a sad, sad, sad thing. And the cows and the chickens, I mean, it's just a horrible situation. That's scary. Um, you know, you, uh, you've made the drive up the five by Sacramento and seen when you pass by that hole with so like a couple of miles of just cows. Yeah, or just that, that, that smell it, hits yeah, you. you if can you smell got, it, right. If well, you got the uh, vent on, it's all bad. Right. Yeah, it's all bad, <laughs> you know, so... Um, you know, and it's been proven that like a single cow would like to have an acre just to walk around and roam to be a at peace cow, mm. and they, you know they have them like bunched up to you know you can't even turn you move, move, move you can't even get a full moo out you know so that's 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 scary so um, that's what oh wait a minute wait a minute how'd that happen? Fred Cray? Huh? Wait a minute. Give me get some headphones. Am I? Am no, I? That's obviously an imposter. It is Halloween. Wait a minute. Somebody's He's... been studying the show and wait a minute. And they, uh, that's a really that's a really real life looking mask. Like whoever that is who that's, we got, who we that's got dialing talking? in with the Fred Cray mask wait is pretty minute. incredible. Yeah, I think he might. He took his Skype on to the 747, and we're getting Fred Cray live from 10,000. Uh, feet up in the air, Mr. Cray. That's really yes. cool. That's really cool that they let him bring all his books on on board. That's a they're always sweating me for my carry on, but I'm gonna see if I could get my uh, you know my my bookcase on with me next. He time. paid a lot extra for that. <laughs> How are you, sir? Well, I'm not leaving until tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. So you shouldn't come pick me up until tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna cancel that limo to LAX then. A, but keep all the dude chicks. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I'll just, well, no, I mean, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll just send them to my house, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Motel 6. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, well, see, that. Uh, I'm glad, you know, I mean, it's the power of the Internet. Yeah. You know, because I would have been sitting out at LAX waiting on Fred. So good, man. So tell us, tell us everybody why you're coming into town. Well, every year, Pitbull and Legal News gives a an award, which we call the Wallace Award because the first recipient of the award was Wallace the Pitbull. And uh, Wallace was uh, probably one of the most famous pit bulls. He wasn't one of Vic's fighting dogs, but he was a pit bull that was able to win Frisbee championships uh, and compete against other kinds of dogs that are probably a little bit faster, a little bit more agile, and yet still with his determination, it was all his determination, he was able to you know, become a, fr a Frisbee championship dog. So as a result of that, he was a great breed ambassador. Uh, there was a book written about him called Wallace the Pitbull by Jim Garant from Sports Illustrated. And um, I actually, when I went to, award, to, to make the award, uh, to Wallace, uh, up where he lives in Michigan, uh, we were at a book signing at Bar. I don't remember what chain, but there were there were hundreds of people there. We were there for four hours, um, and I actually watched when it was over. Somebody changed their mind about pit bulls. There, it, you know, there was a guy there. He was there at the bookstore because he was looking for books. And uh, Rue Yori, who was Wallace's owner, was standing there, and I was standing there. And this guy comes up to uh, Rue and says. Is that a pit bull? And and Rue says, Yes, this is a pit bull. And he goes, Can I pet him? <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, he's friendly. And so he petted him. And you could just see in the guy's eyes and his expression that the pre existing idea that he had had about, you know, this being a really dangerous dog fighting dog, you know, changed. And you could, and, and Wallace had a certain something. I, I mean, you know, certain movie stars, you know, when you, when you meet them, they have a certain charisma that it's hard to really define. But mm -hmm. he had that. Mm -hmm. And the funniest thing was that the day I was going to give him the award, I was at the hotel, and Rue came to pick me up. And he was in a, a an ambulance that had been transformed into a, to carrying dogs. Mm. And as he pulled up, you know, on the side of the, the ambulance was this big picture of Wallace's book. And Wallace was in the passenger seat. And he, as I'm standing there, he looks at me and he was like, you can get in the back. 
<laughs> so I get the back, you know, and, and uh, it was it, he was just an amazing dog. So ever since then, uh, last year we we gave it to uh, Lori Weiss from Downtown Dog Rescue in L.A. And this year uh, we're giving it to Rebecca Corey because she put on the Million Pibble March. And after we looked at you know all the people that we were submitted as uh, you know as potential winners. It was our thought that Rebecca had done the most without any safety net. There are a lot of people that do a lot of stuff. Letty Van Cabbage, for example, from Best Friends, you know, uh, lobbied in two or three states to get breed bans, uh, state laws preventing breed bans. And she, you know, she, but you know, Letty has the whole Best Friends, you know, weight behind her. Mm -hmm. She gets a paid job. You know, Rebecca really did this. You know, with no pay and Absolutely. just you know, by herself. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm afraid to even have a party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no and, doubt. You know, it'd be ready and nobody will come. No you know, doubt, so Fred. Have, it, it is definitely. Especially with your new you know, neighbors, right? You got your yeah. new neighbors keeping an eye on you, their family. They're not going right. to let you get a little out of control with all those parties you used to have. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, it's and definitely. Some, yeah, deserves to be commended and you know we had Rebecca in here and it was an interesting show you know and she knows she's totally welcome anytime she's doing anything we'll be glad to you know help support her and uh, promote her stuff so do you have one of those Wallace Awards with you? I do hold well, on a second alright well we'll be right here we take your time despite what people say too it's like I think people genuinely, especially when they're doing work that's like really selfless, they do like to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Like even though they're they're um, you know they're committed to doing what it is that they're doing, and often will feign like any kind of like notoriety or or you know spotlight put on them, they feel really genuinely good when when somebody does recognize them. And I think it's a wonderful thing that uh, that, that Fred is doing to take some time with something that is a. Uh, you know, has such a great history to uh, give it to somebody and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we recognize you and not only what it is that you accomplished, but also where it came from that you did it with your, you know, with your own bootstraps and stuff. Absolutely. So, wow, look at that. Yeah, All right, here it is. Whoa. That's solid. Whoa, that's it nice. Is solid. Yep. Tilt it yeah, back just a little bit. We're getting a little reflection on the plaque. Oh, yeah, there you go. Wow. Well, congratulations, Rebecca yeah, Corey. Yeah, awesome. She did the 2014 thing. recipient of the Wallace Award. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I might try to sneak in there and, uh, and see the show, you know, because I'll, yep. I'll put on my. Um, uh, my uh, custodian costume, and you know, walk in the back with a <laughs> with a trash can. You know, <laughs> you need a mop and a bucket. Yeah, there you go. Right. And some some dishes, one of them, you know. And, and I got about know. I got about two thousand keys on my keychain. So if that doesn't work, it can always be a janitor. Yeah, you know wanted any of the right. above. I I'm not a co good cook. Um, <laughs> Hey Fred, what's going on in the uh, world of legal news, buddy? I I I, uh, I picked up something off of uh, Reuters. I think it was yesterday where they were talking about some stuff going on in in um, in Connecticut with these with these police officers that went in there and shot some uh, somebody Saint Bernard, and they're they're sending that back into the courts after like six years. But I don't know what what do you got on your mind? Like what's going on in the world of legal news? Well, uh, the, the first bit of news is that Hector, who was one of Mister. Vic's fighting dogs passed away this last couple of days. Um, and incidentally, the guy who owned Wallace owned Hector also, uh, Rue Yori. So and they had they had uh, been, you know, trying to it was tough because, you know, one day he wouldn't be doing so well and the next day he would. So he finally got to the point where they, they put him to sleep. Um, it's sad. And yet uh, it's also something it, all the Vic dogs are getting on in years now. It's been, you know, believe it or not, it's been a long time since that whole thing went down. And so, you know, um, I met I met Hector and uh, when I was out visiting Wallace and the amazing thing about these fighting dogs, and I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again, is how small they are. You know, Hector was not a big dog. He was a small, agile, athletic dog, and he probably didn't weigh more than 30 pounds. And uh, you could easily pick him up. Uh, and it was amazing that uh, it's amazing that what you what the media puts out there, you see these huge, you know, 
uh, jaws and you know, they don't look like that. Uh, so, um, how many of those dogs are left, Fred? Like, uh, you know, how many of those dogs are still out there? Like, would you estimate from the Vic, not, from the Vic you know, I think there's probably ten. Wow. Uh, I know that one of our um, on our our website, Pitbull and the Legal News Network. There's a there's a basically a, an article that covers all the dogs, and we've had most of them on the show. There's still a couple left at Best Friends, um, but you know it, it, they're getting to be about ten and. You know, a lot of these fighting dogs have a thing called babesia, which is yeah. kind of a, an infection they get yeah. that complicates, you know, and, and makes their lifespan uh, somewhat shorter. So, and it's spread by, you know, getting bit and contact, you know, into the bloodstream and things like that. So, yeah. um, you know, it's a, it's a, I'll say it again, I mean, that these dogs have done more for fighting dogs than any other group of dogs in the world because they've changed laws. In Florida, we now have a law that says, you know, if you're a fighting dog, we're not automatically going to euthanize you. We're going to give you a behavior test and see, you know, how whether or not you make a good candidate for being adopted. So, and I think it's it's changed people's perceptions that these dogs are dogs that are victims. And they were made to do what they're doing by people. Yeah. Well, I mean... So, that's, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like a bad situation. It's kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their part, you know, they got out of that, that situation and they're being somewhat of a, I don't want to say mascot, but, uh, uh, a, a proper symbol for some of these fighting dogs to try to get some of this stuff eradicated. So that's, that's actually good news, you know, coming out of bad yeah. news and, um, you know, they've got the, the 10 that are left. Just keep on pushing, you know. They'll they'll yep. they just keep 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 fighting a good fight, and wherever you are, like uh, you know, hopefully some of those laws will get changed in your area. I mean, Florida seems like they're uh, you know they put some stuff on the books, and hopefully some other stuff will start getting on the books in other areas. Um, Fred, who are you having on your show this week? Are you doing a show? I'm going to have on my show this week uh, the people from Aurora, Colorado, who are following, and we may know the answer when we come on our show as to what the uh, Aurora, Colorado citizens had decided. They put they put, put whether or not they should repeal the uh, pit bull ban on the ballot to be voted on. Yeah. And as far as I know, this is only the second time that's happened. It happened in Miami, and now it's happening in Aurora. Um, we've been following that story, and it's been an uphill battle. Uh, the breed ban is the incumbent, incumbent position, and it's easy to, for voters to just sit back and say, well, uh, it doesn't affect me. It's, you know, it, it, just leave it the way it is. Yeah. So the people from uh, in Aurora have been out, you know, out, you know, door to door, uh, out, you know, trying to educate people as to the unfairness and the total uh, impossibility of, of enforcing a breed ban in terms of identifying the dogs and what percentage they are. And they say that, that this education is turning the poll numbers around somewhat uh but we'll see on tuesday that's the that's the, so we're gonna have that person on uh nancy transow from colorado dogs and we're gonna have on a guy named carrie vinson who is a dog behaviors from ontario as you know ontario has uh breed discriminatory laws also and uh he's going to talk about the fact that back in back in i think 1999 there was a dog a dog fatality not involving a pit bull and they had an inquest about it and they made 36 recommendations about what to do about you know public safety and biting dogs and uh one of them was don't have bsl and of course they haven't followed those recommendations and he's been at the forefront in ontario of trying to persuade people and give you know he has great qualifications because he's a behaviorist you know about uh, the fact that, that that dogs are individuals, and you know you can't judge a dog by its a by looking at it and seeing what it looks like, and b by going by breed. 
Well, that's awesome. That sounds like a good show. I think I'm going to tune in and uh, definitely listen to that. It's, it's cool to see that people from other countries, sometimes we forget we get locked in our little bubbles and think that yeah. these problems are... Uh, you know, even either just domestic or even sometimes just localized, they they, they span all over the world, and uh, it's good to see people, you know, our neighbors up in Canada uh, putting down the the good fight as well. So, everybody, that's our buddy Fred Cray. Fred, let them know where they can catch your show. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Pitbull Legal News Radio. Google that; it'll take you to our Blog Talk Radio page. And if you go to our Facebook page, we have the event page listed there also. Awesome. Well, you guys definitely support uh, that show. And much love to you, Fred, for uh, honoring Rebecca. Hey man, am I going to see you this weekend or what? Uh, hopefully, you know what I mean. It's like I got a, I got my uh, disgruntled Dodger uh, costume on right now, and I'm gonna see what I can uh, what I can uh, turn up. But I definitely would love to see you when, when you're here. So, um, all right, I gotta, I gotta check you out. We got we got a bond, man. That uh, sounds In good person. to me. Sounds good to me, brother. That would be so wonderful. Hey, we're gonna uh, take a little break real quick. I think we got our friend uh, Cheryl's on the line. We got Antonio, the Italian Greyhound, over here. Uh, you might not be able to see him. Oh, where is Wal- where is Antonio? Oh, you got the Where's Antonio outfit on. <laughs> Where's Waldo? <laughs> All right, Fred, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna take a, a quick break and um, pay some bills around here. You guys are watching Conversations with a Pitbull Live, the only show of its kind where we bring cool dogs, cool owners, cool people that uh, try to get their little... Uh, he was in a dog outfit earlier, so <laughs> everybody, we love you guys. Happy Halloween. We'll be right back. Oh, that was Antonio in the, in the Breeder X outfit. I knew that. <laughs> Hey, are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste? Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com. You're watching Conversations with a Pitbull Live, a show about dogs, the people that love them, and real issues. Brought to you by Pitbull Energy Drink. Available in a wide variety of flavors, guaranteed no aftertaste. CWAPB Live will be right back after this dog fact of the day. A person standing still 300 yards away is almost invisible to a dog. But a dog can easily identify its owner standing a mile away if the owner is waving his arms. Please support your local rescue groups. They do more to support your community than any others. You're watching Conversations with a Pitbull Live. Can he see me? (laughs) Here, boy. Come. All right. Hey, uh, before we went to the break, you said we had a call on the phone. Uh, Hello? Hello, hello. Hey, Hey, Cheryl. How are you? Happy Halloween. I'm good. I'm really good. Hey, you got a really scary show going on today. We're talking about dog fighting and about breed-specific legislation. That shit scares the hell out of me. Hey, and yep. you see what I'm saying? That's, that was the one I left out. Thank you so much, too. Is that uh, you know? What still scares me yeah, is yeah. this uh, the puppy mill situation yeah, i think that, when we that, when we went out to one. when we went out to uh chicago and vid- visited our friends at the puppy mill project they really i got really educated on like just how bad this stuff is and um from people that you know everybody's not everybody but some people have a specific cause that they're trying to champion and our friends out at the puppy mill project that's their thing and ever since we went and had that experience I pay attention now yeah. when I see yeah. these stories or I see even people that are like, hey, man, I'm looking to get a dog. I'm like, hey, don't go to the, the pet right. store. Right. Like, you know, I mean, you know, I, I'm yeah. all for like capitalism and everybody, you know, small business owners trying to have their thing. But when right. you find out where these dogs are coming from, that's 
it's scary, you know, and it's similar to that situation that you were talking about with the farm animals, where yeah. it's just just the the spaces. There's a um, I was reading an article recently in Tupelo, Mississippi. They just rescued 170 plus dogs from a puppy mill ring right? out there, and they said that the I think it was a uh, is Alcorn the Alcorn. Um, animal shelter, Alcorn Corinth Animal Shelter and the Alcorn County Sheriff's Department stepped up and helped these animals. There was somebody at a flea market that was selling like, you know, dogs, ducks, like right. all kind of stuff. And they, they trailed them back to where they were. And they said, you know, they, they, these animals were living in unimaginable, you know, um, conditions and just crates right. stacked up like, you know, full of feces right. and maggots and all this other type stuff. So, People yeah, down in Alcorn and Tupelo, they're stuff, doing their yeah. thing, you know, and that, it's Tupelo? just that's it's, what that, it wasn't none of Elvis's people, was it? No, no, no. They they got their uh, casino. Even you know, they're, 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 they've got their casinos going on now, and it's it's actually a really nice uh, looking area. I got some family down in Mississippi, but you know, shots out to um, people down in Alcorn, Corinth that are uh, putting a smash down on these fools with these. Uh, you know, with these uh, puppy mills, it's like it's it's ridiculous. But uh, that's what's scary to me, Cheryl. What what else is scary to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, talking about the puppy mills, my husband, uh, my brilliant husband, had an idea a couple of years ago, and I'm going to try to get it done here in Oregon if I possibly can, to uh, make it so uh, people that have pet stores, yeah, instead of selling pets from puppy mills and whatever, because breeders usually don't sell their dogs. I mean, legitimate, uh, ethical, responsible breeders to typically not sell dogs through um, pet stores. Yeah. Why couldn't we have pet stores around the nation be storefronts for local rescue? Yeah, and that's I think they're I think they're open to that. Like I've seen, especially out here, um, a lot of rescues that are doing work with pet stores and right. doing their adoption events at pet stores and helping them because they're not like. You know, the people that work there, they're not, like, evil people, and they're not part of, like, some evil cabal of, like, you no, know, like, no. crazy, crazy people or whatever. Sometimes they don't know. They're just trying to punch the clock right. and get their get their check. And, and just like a lot of people, I think they're willing to help if you let them know. So I think that's a good idea, Cheryl. Yeah, and I think most of the pet store owners would probably be help or would feel good about helping uh, find homes for uh, resp- in responsible homes as opposed to knowing that they may be a part of the puppy mill problem. Yeah. So I think that would be a good idea. Hey, uh, I was really happy to hear a friend was on the show. Congratulations, Rebecca Corey, yeah. on your award. Awesome. And um, I wanted to talk about Aurora, Colorado for a second. Yeah. I, I saw on Facebook, uh, uh, I wrote, read an article that was on Facebook, and it sounds to me like one of the uh, people in Aurora, Colorado, on the council that is championing, championing keeping the ban actually came right out and said that it's really not about public safety. It's more about the perception of safety. Uh, when yes. we have uh, people on city councils that want to keep the breed ban, saying stuff like that, Man, it's time to get in there and, and shake it up, get something happening, because that's just ridiculous that uh, I think uh, 1,100 dogs have uh, died, you know, through this band, uh, been euthanized because of the band. So that that's just BS. No, I agree. I agree. I think, you know, like, I think just trying trying some new things, Cheryl, is uh, it's always cool. You'd say, hey, when do I have the time or where am I going to find the the resources or whatever? But I think, you know, a lot of people, they're, they're willing to help if we can just reach out to them and, um, you know, just yeah, let them know there are yeah. avenues for them to get involved. So what are you guys doing for Halloween uh, today? You guys you guys uh, uh, got anything special well, planned? Well, I'm dressed up in my Pitbull Advocate costume that says, <laughs> keep calm and love Pitbulls. That's right. (laughs) But um, nothing special in Halloween. Uh, Last Saturday, we had our National Pitbull Awareness um, Day uh, bully walk, and we had a great costume contest. Uh, Cute, cute, cute little white and blue Pitbull puppy wearing a Donatello Ninja Turtle costume won the contest. (laughs) Nice. We had a lot of great prizes. We didn't have a really big turnout because... It was a forecast of rain. Yeah. It got rained on a little bit, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, I like but, to see uh, those pictures when you get a chance. 
Uh, I sent him to Foster. Oh, okay. Foster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I got him. <laughs> yeah, seeing yeah. him use technology, yeah. that's also scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm try- uh, we're trying to get a video, too, because uh, one of the Bully Walker's uh, teenage sons was there, and he took tons and tons of video of the walk. So, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's even- just really nice to see all those people out on a cold... Uh, Oregon, October day, um, you know, advocating for their pit bulls. Yeah. Well, email the pictures to Paula because I always lose stuff. <laughs> I uh, remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it, uh, if it wasn't for the GPS, I'd probably not make it here every week. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, anyway, that was that's that's, cool. that's our that's our buddy Cheryl Huerta. She's up in Oregon with the uh, Portland Pit Bulls. And um, Cheryl, you're gonna chime in with us uh, like next week. I think we're gonna uh, Fred's actually coming in town, so we're gonna uh, shake hands and uh, rub elbows with him. And I think we'll have a wonderful oh. show. Maybe I'll get him on camera or something and do something with him while he's here. But um, we look forward to that and look forward to hearing from you again next week on the show. Well, who knows? Maybe one of these days I'll come down and be in the studio with my dog. That would be that, that would be, be really awesome. Cool. That would be so awesome. That's our good friend Cheryl. Speaking That's of right. videos, yep. um, well, what do you want to say? Uh, I wanted to talk to Antonia. Okay. And Angela. Yeah. Angelic. Angelica. That's how you do it. Angelica. Doing good. Antonia good. owes me money. <laughs> okay. You weren't supposed to say that on air. <laughs> oh, okay. Except for the two hundred dollars, you could send it anytime you want. And What's been going on with you guys, man? It's so good to see you. Good to see you guys, too. Glad to be back. Uh, we always look forward to uh, the Halloween scary show here yeah. at Conversations with the Pit Bull, and uh, we're excited to be invited back. How's Antonio doing these days? He's doing pretty good, pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, we're trudging along. How you doing? You know, because I saw you where a, a year, in a year things change, and, you know, you walked in with a cane. Still got it. Still, Still got it. You didn't yeah. have that last year, did you? Yeah. 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 See, I didn't even notice, yeah. man. Well, that's great yeah. because to me, that's what I feel people see first. Yeah. Is yeah. the cane. I was like, so I, <laughs> well, I, I saw her get out the car. So I was like, wait a minute. I know she had great legs, but that, that, <laughs> that she lives away. <laughs> Tell everybody who hasn't seen Antonio before a little bit about about him. Uh, well, Antonio is an Italian greyhound. Um, he'll be seven in December. So he's going to be a senior pretty soon. He got um, more clothes than I do. More and more clothes than I do. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, his. We started off with one small uh, prop box that I would use for little outfit changes, and that has given pregnant to several other boxes. Yeah. I have this shelving system that's just full of boxes of his stuff. Right, right. You know, but we have fun. Um, he's got his Facebook page. You know, we just like to keep things happy, keep people smiling. That's right. And uh, let people know that they're loved. What's the difference between a regular greyhound and an Italian greyhound? Uh, well, an Italian greyhound was bred down from the full-size greyhounds. Um, they are smaller. He sees the treats. Mm-hmm. They are uh, obviously smaller since uh, standard greyhounds are, are pretty big. Um, these guys are the the little elite versions. Uh, there's three different sizes. There's the Italian greyhound, the whippet, which is a little bit bigger, and then the standard size greyhounds. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty similar. You know, he loves to be lazy. He loves to, yeah. you know, lay around. I was always told uh, that uh, Italian greyhounds have two speeds, uh, 90 and zero. And uh, he's really good with the zero. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. I think Fred says he has some uh, greyhounds as well, you know, down there. Right. Um, well, yeah, you, you can afford to be lazy when you got somebody bringing you tailor making your clothes and <laughs> bringing you treats giving you treats all the time living yeah. the good life huh That's Antonio right. yeah, hand fed right what do you guys yeah. what do you, are you guys doing anything for Halloween um we're here this, we're this here. is like, hey, this is like hey. the highlight of it you know yeah. everything else is downhill from here <laughs> 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 we so love having Antonio in here. Look Antonio. at him. You got the. Did you see the? Uh, I like so far. My favorite so far is the Where's Antonio outfit. <laughs> Where's Antonio? Outfit? Yeah, I was thrown together last minute yesterday. You know, I had the glasses, and it's like, wait a minute, because he 
we do calendars every year. The past mm -hmm. couple of years, we've done calendars that we sell, and we donate proceeds to uh, a couple of our favorite uh, rescue groups, mm -hmm. such as uh, Italian Greyhound, Greyhound uh, Rescue Group um, and National Mill Dog Rescue. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've always seen, uh, you know, friends that have all these amazing talents. Right. You know, they can sew things, do all kinds of great things, and, you know, all my stuff is hot glued together, you know. I can't <laughs> sew to save my life. Um, but, you know, uh, my one talent is... I have this very patient little kid who's who's pretty handsome, yes. and um, he likes to dress up. So we started making these these calendars. So um, yeah, I actually brought you guys one. Uh -oh. Hi, we love Yay. gifts. We love gifts. You know, uh, on that note, man, it's all you people out there who. What you mean, keep, you people? You <laughs> people. You know who you people are. You know, all you people out there who keep uh, sending stuff to our Facebook pages about your t-shirts and stuff. You know, push your t-shirt, sell your t-shirt and stuff. And you and I may, see, they don't know, I pay attention. You guys don't never pass on our stuff. What's up with that? So if you want your t-shirts, like we promoting this calendar of this wonderful dog, okay, and look at that. It's actual calendar you can mark off when bills are due and you know, and birthdays, and then when some well, you more... mean when the bill collector is coming around, and you yeah. need to make sure that the doors are locked and the gate is yeah. closed. Yeah, when and some more bills are due, you know, uh, and that's for Valentine's Day, right? What are the Leos looking like? Look at, look at wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look at that. Look at this. See August. Is that laid back? Wow. <laughs> is that laid back? What month is that? And I know there's some lady greyhounds oh, out there yeah, getting their, right their, their, their ears perking up seeing that when he's laying right, right, out with the tuxedo. Right. You said April? Oh, oh yeah. It, I want to see August. I want to see the, how better. the Leo's doing. All right. Let's see. August is after what? <laughs> Here we go. This is yeah, August. Yeah, so Mr. August. You Look know at that. Saying? Okay? Yeah. Now, if that ain't a cute guy. Leo's so, in the house. Yeah. So instead of having those uh, calendars... You know, of uh, the girl hanging over the car engine and all that kind of stuff. Folks, you know, have something that uh, can brighten up the whole house, you know. And Tony the pit bull, look at that. Hey, man, that's, that's laid out, you know. So get your calendar. Where can they get the calendar at? Uh, he's got a Ticktail site. It's uh, Antonio.Ticktail.com, T-I-C-T-A-I-L. And if you don't get that down, uh, just visit his Facebook site, uh, Antonio, Antonio the Italian Greyhound on Facebook, and we can lead you there. And again, portion of proceeds go to Italian Greyhound Rescue and National Mill Dog Rescue. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's right. Well, so we're going to come back to you. Before we, you got a video you want to play before with that? Yeah, we, yeah, a short little video I put together for, um, for our friends at Dogs Without mm -hmm. Borders. Oh, okay. That, then let's do this. A uh, little while ago, we went to the Strut Your Mud event, which is a, a big event put on by uh, Best Friends. They do it annually, and they get, like, I don't know how many rescues are out there, but basically everybody in L.A. that's uh, in, the, in the scene is out there, and they do a... Um, you know, a, a walk with all the uh, everybody's dogs and stuff. And so we went out there and visited our friends with Dogs Without Borders and put together a little promo video for them. So let's check it out. from Dogs Without Borders. Um, we are at Strut Your Mutt 2014 in beautiful Pacific Palisades. Dogs Without Borders, we rescue dogs from all over, mostly LA, high kill shelters in the LA area. Last year we placed over 500 dogs. Well, Strut Your Mutt is basically a fundraiser. It's a great way to raise funds for our organization and other organizations raising funds for their organization through Best Friends. They have been so generous to other rescues and helping them. You know, they provide easy ways to organize fundraisers. And this is a really big one that they do every year, and uh, it's a godsend. I accidentally got involved in dog rescue, and before I did, I didn't know that L.A. 
had, you know, was killing so many dogs and so many animals. I didn't know about the problem, and I can understand how a lot of people wouldn't know. And, you know, I think more and more people are becoming aware thanks to things like Best Friends and more rescue groups getting the word out. You know, you don't have to, you know, buy a dog. You can rescue a dog. You can adopt. There's so many great rescue groups. We're all nonprofits. If someone wants to learn more about us, dogswithoutborders.org. We have a great foster network. We have a foster mentor program, so you'll never do it alone. And, you know, all our dogs are foster-based, so we know them really well before we match them up with the right adopter. And I think that's key for successful adoption because you're not just seeing a cute dog in a cage and judging a book by its cover. This is Galit Rubin from Dogs Without Borders. Please visit us at dogswithoutborders.org and let's go start our month. Say hi, Mazzy. This is one-eyed Mazzy, by the way. North Central Shelter. Good girl. All right, hey. those are our friends from Dog Without Borders, Galit Rubin, and uh, my good friend Nicole Lapidus and Betsy, and everybody else involved with that organization are doing such wonderful work. And um, those are kind of events that we do out here, uh, get to participate in in LA. It was out at Will Rogers Park, it was awesome, and they had so many people there. Um, and Dogs Without Borders is one of the, the top uh, you know, fundraisers for the event. And what's cool about uh, that event, the best friends, they, they allowed the rescues to keep the money that they raise, you know? And I think it's so important for smaller organizations to be able to, the, the work that they do and the, to galvanize all the troops and the resources for these types of events to be able to keep the, the funds that they do to help do some work. And as you heard, they, they rescued over 500 dogs last year. You know, that's that's more than a dog a day, and that's pretty cool for a, a for dogs. a small organization. You know, so props to our friends at uh, Dogs Without Borders. Again, make sure you go check out that event November eighth and 9th uh, by No Kill LA out at the La Brea Tar Pits. It's a, a big adoption event. They've got over fifty uh, rescues and partners that are going to come, and uh, you know, it'll be over a thousand dogs there available for adoption. Um, and speaking of adoption, I think on this scary day. We've got our good friend Paula Archer is out there, our resident adoption hey, specialist hey, and favorite, that's, favorite uh, Skype beauty. That's right. <laughs> How you doing, Paula? Are you out there? I'm here. All Happy right. Halloween, everybody. Yeah. And the same to you. You know, uh, how's the weather in Moser, Mosery, or Misery, or <laughs> uh, Missouri? Misery. Mm -hmm. Misery. Uh, sunshine and uh, cold. Oh, well, better yeah. you guys than us. <laughs> Do you guys have a lot of trick-or-treaters in your area, uh, Paula, no. or are you guys out in the middle of the... They have to come on a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and they got to walk the, uh, like a mile, a mile driveway like Forrest Gump to come get a little piece of candy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, gravel road. We're out in the middle of uh, the, you know, we're out in the middle of farm country. So, That's right. Yeah, we we don't see any trick or treaters out this way. Oh uh, well, lucky you. So uh, before you get into the dogs, my dear, tell uh, everyone about this contest that Faith is up for. Okay, um, <clears throat> our friend. Cindy Marabito has a, a contest going mm -hmm. and is for a 2015 calendar shoot. And um, you send in your dog's photo and then you share the information with your friends and relatives and everybody and ask them to vote. The money goes to the rescue to help rescue more dogs. So it is a, a good cause for the money. Um, as you know, I lost faith about a month ago. Yes. Yeah, we know. And that's why we, we want to have everybody vote because nobody better than faith to be on the calendar, baby. Yeah. As a matter of fact, on the front page. 
And this is what you got to compete with, Faith, because I'm telling you, Which, the competition is strong. What, uh, look, at, uh, look at Antonio. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Tuxedos, holding the flower. Yeah. Got the back. Oh, man, you know. She better have her game on point, Paula. That's all I'm saying. Which hit her game is point, point, point. <laughs> Faith is. So what picture? I, well, I saw the picture. I'm only, I got to see it because I saw it on my phone. But I haven't been on. I got to get on my computer and I'll go vote. Uh, is it like Chicago? You know, because. I'm from Chicago, and in Chicago we had uh, the saying is, vote early and often. <laughs> yeah, so, you, know, so. you can vote as many times as you would like. Um, it, you do have to create an account. They mm -hmm. ask for your name and email address. And so where do, you, where do you do this, or where do they find that link? It's they on can find that link on Faith's page, which is... A Journey by Faith. Um, they can find it on Reunion Rescue page, Facebook page. They can find it on my timeline. Uh, they can also find it on the Breeder X support group, which um, it's on there. Great. Um, if they can't find it, they can always get a hold of me, and I'll be happy to give them the link. There you um, go. Right now. Faith is winning. Hey, yeah. hey, that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, all right, all right. All right, so everybody vote for Faith. So, um, Paula, as Faith would say, Mommy, say some dogs. I'm ready. Chris, are you ready? Yeah, he's ready. Okay, first up. I have Libby. So you adore the pit bull and bully breeds, but you live somewhere that doesn't have the space for a larger dog like them? Then check out this girl. She might be the one for you. Libby is a little mini pity at 25 pounds, and she is about 15 inches tall. She is the sweetest sweetest little thing you have ever seen and you will just love her when you meet her the vest the vet estimates that her age is between one to two years old she loves everyone and gets along very well with other dogs she is smart and friendly she's a fawn girl who needs a good home and she is up to date on all of her shots, all of her vaccinations. She is heartworm negative. She loves to play. She's house trained, kennel trained, and leash trained. Now we have Nana. Nana and her brother, who we'll show a picture of in just a moment. They are both around eight months old. Uh, they are house trained. They both get along well with other dogs and people. Both are up to date on vaccinations and they are leash trained. Now this, this next picture is Milo. It's uh, Nana's brother and he is also eight months old, house trained, leash trained, and he loves other dogs and people. Of course, by them being so, so young, they're going to be very active and still puppies so they will need a little bit of training now next we have dewey dewey's photo as you can see is a halloween photo so we got to give him that dewey is around 40 pounds and it's all just body and muscle he adores people and he adores kids this boy needs a best friend and he would be perfect for a family that needs him just as much as he needs the family. He has had all of his shots and this baby is about six to eight months old. Now we have Coco. She says, my name is Coco and I am waiting for my family and my best friend to find me. I'm a really good girl. I am leash trained, house trained, and kennel trained. I like most other dogs as long as they're uh, not up in my face and too hyper around me. I love to cuddle and I love to take naps with you. I am spayed. 
I am up to date on all my vaccinations, even my rabies shots. These dogs that we've featured today, they are from Hazel's Pit Bull Bully Breed Rescue. That's Angola, Indiana. The number to get more information on these cuties is 260-667-1152. And the uh, president of Hazel's Pit Bull Rescue is Carrie Cope. If you need any more information on these dogs, please give Carrie a call. If you need any more information on how to reach Carrie, get a hold of me. I'll be happy to share that information with you. And that's all I have today, guys. Hey, that's enough for me. I think that was awesome. <laughs> I like that uh, Halloween uh, picture. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And uh, this last dog, Coco, I like it when you catch people with their eyes closed in the pictures. Oh, right. You see dogs right. with their <laughs> eyes closed. She's like, she's like perfectly posed, but got her eyes like closed with ears up. Like, it's just, that's just hilarious. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Paula. That was awesome. Wait a minute. That was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Batman. Look at him. Yeah. Look at him. I don't think uh, anybody, look, anybody out there has got like, anything on Antonio. The, the outfits are off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, um, yeah, you know, my let, uh, Makes dogs outfits. Yeah, you, know, you showed me that. They yeah. came in last week. Yeah, she um she she made me and grip some. She's customized and grip something. Now. But boy, and uh, when she sees this, what what uh, you've been doing with hot glue? <laughs> and she sit my sewing machine. That, <laughs> but you know, it's like that is funny. With the mask and everything. So um, we got we got a phone call real quick. Paula, oh, really? thank you I'm so sorry. much, sweetheart. Have a wonderful. Uh, um, Halloween and uh, give our love to everybody around you and um, we'll we'll talk to you next week we're gonna hang out with Fred when he comes in town and um, you know that's what it is um, yeah. and we got who's on the, who's on the Hi, line uh, Chris hello Debbie hello how are you Dan and, hey. and uh, Foster how are hey, you there's today? a familiar voice we're good how you doing hey, I, hey you got it you gotta hear this because I don't know what happened <laughs> I'm getting chased by a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I got to knock about her. Dip the tomahawk chop. <laughs> yeah. uh, off the yeah. top ropes. Off the top ropes. We want to make it feel it. <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, you, you guys, I'm, I love your show. I mean, you guys are awesome. And thank you, Paula. And that the little dog, oh, and Taylor, you're adorable. Yeah. And all of us together can make a difference with all these animals, you know. Absolutely. We're their voices. And, you know, we got to be heard. We all stick together. Absolutely, so, absolutely. What are you guys yeah. doing for, are you doing anything special for Halloween down there? Uh, oh, yeah, but there's going to be a big Halloween party, and we're going to go and check it out, you know. Nice. Put the, I'm, I'm going to put the feathers on, do the, the <laughs> war dance. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's right. That should be fun. I but think, I, I want to thank you guys, both of you, and, and Paula. Every, every, what everybody does, it means something, you know, meaningful moments. We and try. time that, that help be the voices for these animals. I've been sharing your shows all over, you know, my uh, my Facebook wall and groups and everything. And, hey, to, uh, we join in together. We can make it happen. Yeah, We're making it happen, yeah. baby. We're making it happen. One dog at a time, one human at a time. Yeah, the, yes. show, the show isn't what it is without everybody else that uh, participates. And That's we've got, right. We've got some uh, wonderful guests that come visit us and share their love. And we got some people that Skype in and people that are doing events and Educate people calling people. in and educating and, and uh, just sharing the love. And that's what it's all about. And we look forward to uh, keeping it going. That's right. And, you know, Paula, you, uh, we, I'll let you go, but I forgot to ask you what happened to Blaze. I thought he was going to Skype in here. We're gonna, we can't. This is the guy in the desert. He used to be in San Diego. I you remember met, Blaze. Met, yeah. Yeah. He's he's been trying to get on like three shows in a row. Oh yeah, and for some reason, but that's you know. So Blaze, Blaze. Hey, we ain't got nothing but love for you, baby. But you gotta try some. You treats. gotta get in, man. It's, try some it's treats not my and go fault. straight to the top of so, whatever list that I'm making. It could be getting on the show list. It could be uh, <laughs> there you go. getting a, a nice email, whatever. You want to try some treats, buddy? Some, some, yeah, cause uh, <laughs> you know there's. And people don't know that. So let me just tell the truth. There's so many people that uh, 
bug Paula because they stopped bugging me because everybody understands that I don't run nothing. I just show up. So uh, between the technical difficulties and the things happening, sometimes it just don't work. That's why they let me, they stopped me from booking the show because they say, we were supposed to have three people on, and I tell 20 people to come on. And <laughs> so then I only have like 18 people mad at right. me. So uh, trying, so to, like, trying to make uh, Chris use his other four arms, and we're trying to keep right. you know trying to keep it down to a minimum. Just use six. That's brother. right. So and I'm talking. I'm just mentioning Blaze because you know I really I really kind of. No, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't feel bad because I don't feel nothing. The only thing I feel bad about is these dogs that you know aren't getting adopted and end up getting euthanized, which is exactly what Blaze and everybody else is trying to do. So we we're doing our uh, best to help, and the other five people who are in the same situation. I ain't calling your names because you guys only got put out twice. And Blaze is at the top of the list. Well, it's a free-flowing <laughs> show, so it's like if you got somebody and you say, "Hey, man, you should call in the show," or you should Skype in, or whatever, we take That's whoever right. we can, whoever we can press the button and get in. You know what I mean? That's right. So I'm gonna throw a shout out and tell everybody to go to uh, Blaze's page. Is uh, Hooks, Hooks, Hooks. Paula, you see Blaze? Duh. You know I can't remember my own pages. You know so. But I remember Breeder X. Hey. So anyway, so Blaze, let's get in here, man, and uh, we'll get you at the top of the show and let everybody know what's going on and, you know, how we can support you, all right? So until next time, Antonio. Uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> look, what, what, what's that? Hey. Mini, what's that? Minion. Minion, that's right. See, I started to say mini-me. <laughs> but it does look like a mini-me. You guys you guys have a wonderful Halloween, and that's make sure right. that you get out there and support everybody that you saw on the show. Go out to nkla.org backslash events and check out the dog adoption event that's going on November 8th and 9th, and visit our friends at Dogs Without Borders, and you guys keep supporting Breeder X. That's right, and see uh, the first episode of Breeder X because... Uh, episode two will be coming this month real soon in a couple of weeks. We're trying to burn out that first one. So until you guys, I, until I know everybody has sent it to everybody they know, I'm not launching episode two. And last so. thing, Dodgers, please step your game up, man. This Giants <laughs> thing is killing me. Please get your stuff together, and I don't know what's going on with the Lake Show. Oh, but, right. Uh, and the last thing, this, the dog's name, Beagle Boo, B Bagley... No, Brutus. I don't know. But the dog that just got discovered that he didn't have AIDS, he just got unquarantined yesterday. He was owned by the, uh, one of the nurses. Glad to have you back with us, brother. Peace out. Bye. Happy Halloween. And I approve this message.